All right, so looking at 14, there's a few things that we can take on to other questions no matter what they're asking us. And that is the value of the answer choices. They're telling us that we need to find the solutions, AKA zeros, AKA roots, right? AKA X intercepts of this parabola, right? How fun it is to have four names for one thing, right? <laughs> so um, let's just get that in our mind to understand that whenever you see that, it's synonymous with those other words that I just mentioned. Also, we look at our answer choices and we can see that, well, there's a few ways to get to your roots, solutions, zeros, x-intercepts, whatever you want to call them. And that is by factoring, right? Or graphing, which you can't do on the snow calculator section, um, or using the quadratic formula. Now, our answer choices here are telling us we obviously want to use the quadratic formula because, well, we can see that you got that plus or minus square root situation going on. Now, uh, I want to just take a quick look at the graph real quick because what you'll note, I'm going to go to it in a moment because what we see here is here's the original expression that they gave us, right? Right here on top. This is the same thing, right? And notice how I simplified it. Now, I want to be very clear about, uh, because I factored out three and then I, you know, I divided each side by three, which made the numbers easier to deal with. Because we're about to use a quadratic formula, I want to use the easiest numbers possible. Now, when I jump to a graph here of these expressions, this purple graph represents the original one, right? the 3x squared plus 12x plus 6. And then now I'm going to be putting in the uh, second expression. Notice how it's a little bit different, right? In terms of how wide it is. Most importantly, the vertex is different. But most important that what we really care about because we care about the solutions or the x-intercepts, notice how they're the same. So what that tells us is that it, when we reduce or simplify or factor out, you know, this 3, 12, and 6, okay, it makes our numbers easier to deal with. As long as, but it doesn't change your answers as long as we're talking only about the roots. Everything else it could change. So just be careful when you're uh, simplifying it because some of us can simplify, but then try and find that vertex and we'll actually be getting the wrong answer if we do that because when you factor out a number like that, you end up with a different vertex. So that's not the case though. And now that I have simpler values to work with here, I can plug it into the quadratic formula, which is negative, the, remember the quadratic formula is negative B plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. And now I can just plug these in and it's gonna be a lot easier to solve for. So we have negative four plus or minus the square root of uh, four squared. So I'll just jump ahead and just testing timing. 16, four a, which is one now, and then c, which is two now, Let me extend that house and then all over 2a, which is just going to be 2 because a is 1, right? Uh, all right, and then now I can uh, rewrite this expression. Uh, I'm going to rewrite it because remember, this is plus or minus, and this whole thing, so this is actually two different terms, and it's being divided by the same thing. So I can actually rewrite this as negative 4 over 2 plus or minus the square root of what all this is over 2, and I'm going to simplify this as well, so it's 16 minus eight, which really means that this is just eight. Now, remember if this was being, like let's say that this was like four times this, you wouldn't be able to rewrite it like as two different things. This is one term when you're multiplying, but because it's plus or minus, those are these are now two different terms, which means you can now individually divide them as their own, uh, you know, set, like divide each of them by two. Now. I look at this and I realize that this becomes negative two plus or minus, and I look at our answer choices that automatically gets rid of C or D. And I can fact, and this is something maybe we don't do all the time, but I can factor out this radical, radical eight, and ask myself, what is factors of eight where at least one of them is a clean square root? And that is four and two. If I square root both of these, right, I realize that multiplying together gets me back to eight, square root of eight. But at least when I break it up this way, I know this has a clean square root. So this is actually now two square root of two. So this just became that. So now I can have two square root of two over the original uh, two that, that was there. These, remember this is two times that, and this is now also all of this being divided by two. So these are actually opposite functions, right? Two times something divided by two. And that means that these two will actually just cancel out. And what you're left with is negative two plus or minus the square root of two, which is A. A good practice to do a couple times because there's a few concepts that really just apply to a lot of other problems.